how to set up your camera for live streaming. You're going to need a camera, you're going to need someone to show you all the steps and most importantly you're going to need some cables. So without any further ado let's get into this. Hello and thanks for joining me in this course I'm going to help you to live stream with your gear. The whole idea here is I want you to be able to live stream with your photography gear for your next Zoom meeting, your next live stream, even if you're doing some gaming, you want to stand out and make your live stream look epic compared to everybody else. I've got a setup here that I've been using for a number of years. Who am I? I live stream on Amazon Live, I live stream on Reddit, I live stream on LinkedIn Live and have loads of content that I make around videos and live streaming. So I want to share my knowledge with you and give you some options to help you make the best of your next live streaming session. I'm aiming this at anybody who's interested in making a nice looking visual element of their show. If you're setting up a show, if you're setting up a live stream, this is going to be the one for you. So make sure you watch this course and enroll. We're going to have some amazing tips to share with you. We're going to cover nearly everything you need to know from the camera, the lighting, the gear. The cameras will be a big element and very important for you to consider. So you could go down the lines of a DSLR camera for live streaming. We can look at a couple of options and see what works well and what doesn't work well. So I would say if you're looking to do a professional setup, you can work from a webcam. So webcams do offer good quality these days and you're going to be spending a couple of hundred dollars easily on a webcam to get you some decent quality. However, if we were to find you a camera which is more versatile, because if you're going to be making digital content and you're thinking about making videos, you're going to also want thumbnails for those videos. So you want to be able to take good photographs to accompany your videos. You want to maybe do additional videos that are trailers or built up to your actual live stream. This is one camera. I'll show you a few more cameras and then we can actually look at what would be good for you to give you an idea of live streaming cameras. So first we have a entry level DSLR camera. So that's option number one. We've got a more professional DSLR camera. It's slightly bigger with a more professional lens. We're going to talk about lenses and why you'd want a better lens in some situations. What will happen is you will notice if you want a more professional feel with depth of field and a nice sharp image with like a blurry background, a lens is what is going to achieve that with a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, which is also an option. So there's two options there. We also have an action camera, which you can theoretically use for live streaming. And I will talk to you about that. So if you have certain types of action cameras, they can work for live streaming. So keep that in mind. And if you've got a budget, you're looking to have a cheaper option that might be an interesting one to look at. However, most people will be familiar with webcams. So you can actually use a webcam for live streaming, which is what they're intended to be used for. So these are nice, easy options. Again, this will determine on the feel and look of your video that you want to achieve, which camera you end up going with. So I've given you a couple of options here to help you think about it. However, something we haven't covered, you can use a mobile phone. If you have a nice mobile phone, that will work well for live streaming as well. But it is all dependent on the type of feel of your final show or your live stream and what you're looking to do. If you want something with multiple cameras and something that's visually pleasing, we will be looking at additional options to help you. So let's have a look at some actual cameras and get a look at prices and budget. To help you along, we're going to look at some actual camera examples and prices. So find the camera and the budgets around the cameras. You also get some valuable tips along the way of why certain cameras would be better than others. So as you know, we're gonna concentrate on one camera today where we're gonna set it up in a live streaming situation. However, it's not gonna be a bad idea to check what else is out there because not everybody will have the same budget or a requirement from the live stream. So I'm gonna bring you quickly over to my screen here. The first option I'm showing you is a webcam. It's a Logitech C920 webcam. So you're looking in the region of 90-ish dollars, under $100 basically, and that'll be a camera for you. That'll give you a nice wide view. Yes, so what we've got here is one of the options for your webcam. So there are many brands out there, so you need to keep an eye on that. There will be an extremely wider view on this camera. So it's going to be a slight different feel. It'll be very similar to if you have your laptop webcam on and it's quite in your face and it's a bit what's the correct word bloated would be the word i think because it doesn't give you that nice pleasing view 
So webcams, perfectly fine for meetings and quick sessions because it's a requirement. But if you're looking to do a more professional looking video, a bit cinematic with nice colors, then we need to look at additional options. So I wanted to show you that to give you an idea of pricing. Let's have a look at another option. So what else do we have? We looked at an action camera, such as, which can be plugged in. So there's a number of options in action cameras. Some are available to be used as webcams and some are not. So that needs a bit of research. Uh, let me show you a few examples of pricing. So we're looking at double the price now because we're going to look at something like the DJI Osmo as an option. And these are giving you ideas of pricings on cameras. So they're not going to necessarily be available for live streaming. You would need to do more research on that. That's one interesting thing. If you're using cameras such as action cameras that are designed more for video and action, and you're using them in multiple ways, it can still be done. I've done loads of videos and help videos about how to use an action camera for live streaming. And that's where I originally started. I used that for a number of years until I got to a point that there were slight things that made me worry about that. We'll talk about those in a later segment of why certain cameras will cause you issues if you're live streaming for longer periods of time, for example. But if you have short sessions, it should be perfectly fine. Now, next up, we've already looked at the DJI. We've also got a Hero 9 here. So GoPro allow you to live stream with their cameras. But you can see we're quickly getting into a higher budget here now. That's close to $400. So if you're looking at a cheap stream and you're looking at a budget option, you want to look at a webcam maybe your existing mobile phone or possibly an action camera dslrs i think it's time we looked at some dslrs so let's bring up a few dslrs for you now so next up because we're looking more closer at dslr cameras we're going to look at a few options there's a mirrorless camera option i'm going to show you two canons that i have used and i've been interested in for live streaming so let's bring you over to my screen the first one here is a canon m50 mark ii camera now this camera has a few extra options or few features which are quite handy for live streaming so we'll talk about those so price wise you're looking at close to seven hundred dollars that's an interesting option for a camera for live streaming now if you're looking at that camera would you get what you want if you're looking at this type of quality yes you will but there's additional things to go alongside that so we need to keep in mind your actual overall budget it will incorporate lighting leads it's quite a bit that goes into it, but don't worry, we're going through each segment today, so we'll be fine. So that's option number one. I did not buy the Canon M50 Mark II. I recently upgraded from, well, recently, I say. It's been about two months. I used to use this camera for live streaming, and I've changed to this camera. And this camera, I'm going to show you right now. And the reason why I bought this camera over the Canon M50 that I'm showing you today. Okay, so this camera is the one I brought. This is the Canon SL3, also known as a 250D. It's a great small option, lightweight camera with a flip out screen, and it offers the essentials you need for live streaming. What are the essentials? Ideally, you'd like a flip out screen so you can see yourself if you're filming yourself. In addition to that, you're going to look at things like, does it have a HDMI out? which is going to be essential. We're going to cover that in a later segment, segment, so don't worry too much about that. HDMI out refers to a signal coming out of the camera. So if you have a HDMI out cable, such as that little section there, you plug a cable in and it allows you to see what the camera is showing on your computer for live streaming. So basically using it as a webcam. That's an interesting feature that we need to keep an eye on, as well as some cameras will not have a clean menu to come out. It might show you the recording sign, the battery logo, all those things. So we need to find cameras that don't show those menus. We want it to be clean, like you can see here. There's no overlaying menus on my uh, live stream uh, or video recording. And also we want auto focusing in live view, because if you're moving about, we don't want the camera to miss focus you. So what I mean by that is if you refer to my name badge here, you'll see it's nice and sharp. And you'll notice there as I moved away from the camera, that got blurry because the camera was following my face to make sure I was in focus. That's very important. So these two cameras that I've shown you today, the DSLR cameras, both offer that option. Lenses wise is the next thing to think about. So if you go down the DSLR camera, lenses are going to be very important. So let's look at some lenses. 
So now that we've started looking more seriously at cameras and we're looking at options, we're going to concentrate on one camera, which is currently a DSLR. So we talked about looking at the right lens for your camera and we need to make sure that it will be compatible. So my camera is a Canon camera and it will be an EF mount system, which you can see here. Now the couple of cameras we looked at today, we also looked at the Canon M50 Mark II, which is the one I didn't buy. And that was because that is an EFM mount lens. So the lens would actually be different. So because I already own a lot of Canon lenses and have equipment that I would like to transfer to any new camera I buy, that was why I bought the SL3 250D from Canon because that is also an EF mount lens. So that meant when I got the camera, I changed the lens to put this custom lens on. So this lens is a 1.450 millimeter Canon lens and this allows you to get a nice feel. It's very close to the human eye. So if you were actually here in front of me, this is how you would see me. So it gives you a nice perspective. Some lenses tend to distort the field of view. So what you're seeing is not actually real. It's more pushed out or focused in, for example. So that's something to remember. With these lenses, they can be expensive. However, let's have a quick look at pricing on these lenses and see what would be a good option for them. So I've got the 50 millimeter on screen, which I'll share with you now. So in this example, we're looking at close to $400 for a lens. This is the lens I have here, 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. So this will allow you to get this type of video quality paired up with the camera. We are streaming and recording in 1080p. So that would be an option for you to use. At later point, if we decide to go down the 4K route as things progress, we can change the camera if we wanted to and put this lens on the next camera. So we're actually investing in a longer future of making video. So if it's a long term goal and you know you've got a couple of years ahead of you, then you want to plan for the future. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your gear. So that's lens one. However, how about if you don't want this look, maybe you want a wider view. A lot of people like to have the camera quite close and they like a really wide view to show more of their background if they're doing vlogging or they're outdoors possibly. There's another lens option. It's not from Canon, you'll be surprised to know. It's actually from Sigma. So Sigma make a great lens. It's an 18 to 35 millimeter. So if you're not familiar with that, I have done a separate section talking about lenses and the millimeters and how to use the right one for your requirements. So I find the 50 millimeter works well if I'm able to put my camera about six feet away from me. If you're in a constricted space and you don't have this kind of distance, you might want to get the camera closer to you, which is why you'll want a lens like this, which has 16 to 35 millimeters. The numbers that are good to concentrate on here is the 1.8. So you'll notice on this 50 millimeter, that is a 1.4 aperture lens. The lower that number, the better it will perform in lower light and also it allows you to get that nice blurry background feel. So that's what that number refers to. There's a more complex way of explaining it, but I'll keep it simple. And that 1.4 will allow you to have a nice depth of field. The 1.8 would also be a good option. And that lens, you'll see the price because it's more versatile. It's close to $736 roughly. So there's something to keep an eye on. Would you need that? because you're restricted by space, you need to buy that lens. So that's something to give you that nice feel in your video. So that's a couple of lenses to help you with your live streaming situation and also a look at the cameras. Um, next up, we're gonna be looking at the setting up of this. So how does it actually work? You've got your lens, you've got your camera, what's next? Let's start setting this up. So when you're gonna start looking at the live stream element of this setup, we wanna be able to power your camera for long enough for you to live stream and not worry about A, your battery power running out and your camera turning off in the middle of a live stream. What do we need for that? We need to be able to power your camera for longer, which is why these types of cameras allow additional options. So in this example, I'm showing you a DSLR camera. This is cross transferable to most DSLR cameras that offer this. And you have your battery compartment here as such. And what we're gonna need is something to power it for longer. So ideally we want to power this into a socket. So we're going to need a little upgrade, which I will show you on screen as well. So you know what I'm referring to. Let's bring that up for you. And it's basically called a power option. So you've got 
a dummy battery. This works by plugging in a dummy battery, making the camera think there's a battery inserted. However, it's actually gonna be plugged into a socket and be powered. So you're gonna not have to worry about your battery anymore. So let me show you how we set this up as the first stage. I like to do this first, so then we know our camera's gonna be fine. So that's the power lead. Here is the adapting system. And then we have a little option here. So I'm gonna get you a little close up on this so we can see exactly how this works. So each model of camera has its own battery size. That's something you need to search for and find the right one for your camera. You can simply search the make of your camera. For example, Canon SL3 dummy battery and you'll get this. So we have well, this or an equivalent one for your camera. This has an option here. Instead of a battery, it's actually got a plug. You can see there. So we're going to plug this. It all comes in the kit, by the way. Some of these can be USB powered and some can be powered via um, a socket. So there we've, we've got that set. So next up, we're going to flip our camera around. We're going to open up the battery compartment and we're going to slide in the battery or the battery dummy battery i should call it just like that hopefully you're seeing this and that clips in and luckily you will see here on these cameras you actually have a little tab so they are pre-empting you using these and there you go your cable has been inserted so now that camera is actually wired in to be used how does that look there's a little wire hanging out and then you will obviously plug it in to use for longer periods of time so let me put that all up and you can see that there beautiful so there is the power that will plug into here and then that goes into our socket and that camera is actually ready to be powered for indefinitely basically um well i say indefinitely i have live streamed with this camera set up for up to three hours and i've not had any issues now something that will come into this is overheating and the camera being left on for too long i want to cover this in this segment because we're looking at power if you have a different environment where it's slightly hotter and warmer you need to make sure your camera's got good circulation and that will allow you to make sure the camera does not overheat uh, based where i am it doesn't get that hot so we don't actually i've never had that issue of getting overheating however some countries do get very hot so possibly think about ac in your room and your environment to make sure it doesn't get too hot and additional things that you can think about is making sure you leave the battery flap open which allows the heat to be dissipated also if you have a flip out screen you can actually flip the screen out so it's more surface area to dissipate the heat that's a few little tips for you as a bonus so we've done the majority of the sections now where we've looked at everything the camera is ready and it has got its continuous power system set up the next thing we want to look at is starting to get the wiring element of the camera set up so what is very important is finding the right cable for your need this cable is not something that you would think you need but you actually do need firstly the camera that you have will have a few options if i can show you this you've got a little flap there and then you'll have a few entry points you can see here i've got an hdmi so you're probably familiar with hdmi cables being like this size the big size that you put into tvs and consoles and gaming consoles but that does not fit in the side of the camera so a very important option you need to get is a converter yes so it's actually a, a mini hdmi which you plug into your camera like that and then it becomes a female full-size hdmi so this is how we get the signal from the camera out to allow us to plug it into our computer so that is one little thing you need let me zoom you out a bit so you can see the wider view here and we've got the power sorted out we've got the hdmi cable plugged in and then we'll need a hdmi cable you need the hdmi cable to be the same length as how far your camera is going to be from you so or longer so this is like a three meter hdmi cable my camera tends to be easily two meters away i've got extra meter there to play about with to get it around the computer for cable management so get yourself a nice length of a hdmi cable and that basically works as such you've got your adapter here you plug in the hdmi cable so the hdmi i want to be a little bit more clear here because these can be confusing what we've done we've put a hdmi cable adapter into our camera so the camera is going to be sending out 
a picture view via HDMI. That means there's a signal coming along this cable. And then we've got this adapter here, which allows us to extend that to a longer distance with the HDMI cable. And next up, we will look at extending that even further to our computer. So how do you plug a HDMI to your computer? Well, you need something to help you along the journey. And that would mean you need to buy a HDMI capture card. So this is designed to put in a HDMI into and then make it into a USB, which your computer will recognize. So that's exactly what my setup is here. I'm using the same setup as I'm showing you. So that, let me show you that so you can see that plugin. So as an example, I'm going to show you another HDMI capture card that can be used. And how it works is you'll see in the back of the HDMI capture card, I'm going to plug in the cable. So the flow here is camera with the adapter from mini HDMI to large HDMI size over here. And the end of that cable is plugged into here. And then I would suggest getting yourself a USB hub which will be very handy, a powered USB hub, USB 3 ideally for the high speed. And then this would plug into your hub, which then goes into your computer or laptop. So that's the flow of how we're setting that up. Hopefully that explains the, the work working point of this. And that capture card, I have upgraded from that capture card. You would also notice there are a few capture cards and why you need to use a better one than that one, which I'll cover in the next section about HDMI capture cards, but that's the flow of the cabling and getting the signal from the camera to your computer. Next, let's look at a few HDMI capture cards and why some are more expensive than others. So you may have seen a big variance in HDMI capture cards. Why are some more expensive and others cheaper? There's a few things you want to keep an eye on here. There has been loads of, I've seen quite a lot of investigations about the bit rates and the overall experience of the different views of these cards. So I'm boiling it down to a few things that I tested and I can tell you. So let me show you the capture cards firstly, so you know what they refer to in terms of pricing. So the first one we've got here, is gonna be a budget option. And I wanna show it to you in terms of pricing. So let's go over here. So you're looking at under $20 there. And that is showing as a 1080p 30 frames a second capture card. So this may get a bit more complicated, but I'll try and explain it to you in a way that helps you understand why. So for example, if that card is being used as a HDMI capture card and you used more than one of those cards, you're going to have an issue because I had an issue. If you use two cameras like I have here, one and two, I've actually got three and four as well, which I use for my standing desk. These conflict and they don't actually supply a feed they get confused because they're all called the same usb capture card in the software um, in terms of live stream for longer periods of time i have had times where this card has frozen in a live stream so i have to turn my camera off and turn it back on again so that's a limitation of that card it's cheaper so if you're on an ultimate budget and you're not too worried about having to reset your stream it's fine if you're doing it more professionally and everything needs to be more sleek and it's a business or you're getting paid for it. You want something that's going to be reliable. So this card is about five times more expensive than that card, but I'm willing to pay that more money for reliability and knowing that that's not going to let me down. That's going to be an essential part of your gear. So it's the basic standard thing. You get what you pay for. And in terms of technical gear, there's been more research and development in these cards and I'm more behind the back backing it. Um, this card is an ultimately cheap one, similar kind of situation of a HDMI capture card that has not worked well for me at all. And yeah, I would not recommend getting two cheap cards if you're doing it professionally, but you'll already be aware of that. So keep that in mind. So that's fine in terms of capture cards and a quick little view of pricing and essential tips. Hopefully that helps you if you're in this journey to find out why they're expensive and cheap. So in addition to that, it's also worth mentioning, this one is a 4K. So you can actually stream with the card and you can see in the information here, it's got support for Windows 10, Mac OS, and we have got technical spec. I'm just checking because I, I always, yeah, live creation in 4K or full HD. Resizes and direct. So for example, if you're doing a gameplay, you're going to want higher frame rates so it doesn't, if you're doing a live streaming for gaming, these won't be as good for your gameplay as your cam link would because it'll handle that high stream better, the 
60 frames a second, more smooth gameplay, less glitchy. So hopefully that explains a bit about the, the cards and using them. Um, next up, we're going to look at a bit more information around live streaming and how it can help you to get a really good quality live stream. So we've already looked at a few things here. Something that's going to be essential is a tripod. So let's start looking at a few tripods for you and see what would be a good option. So once you've set up your camera and you've got all the cabling ready, you're going to want to keep your camera stable when you're live streaming because it's going to be further away from you. What do we need to think about for that? We need to get a good sturdy tripod. It's not going to be a very expensive option, but you need to keep it in your budget. So here we've got a carbon fiber tripod, which will be a nice option there to keep your camera steady. We're looking at close to uh, full price is about $120, but on an offer, you can get it from anything as little as $80. And this is an option to get you using your camera in different ways. So you can actually have it physically located with a ball head so you can easily adjust it. But that is going to be an essential piece of kit. There are additional tripod options out there, which are more designed with video fluid heads. But if you're going to have a static camera, you can get away with a cheaper option tripod, especially for live streaming. So that's like a nice mid ground where if you need to take it out, it's still an option for you to take out with you. You can compactly pack it up and use it for normal video recording. So tripods are going to be essential to keep in mind. As well as those, next up, lighting and setting up a good feel around how your visual live stream will look. So the lighting is a big section, but we'll look at that together next. So remember, the most important element of your setup is going to be lighting. So lighting can make or break how your live stream will look and how it will feel. So even if you have a webcam or a DSLR camera or a number of cameras that we originally looked at when we were starting this uh, course, you will be interested to see that they can be improved with lighting. I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can see my background there has a slight tinge of green, green, it's all backwards when you're recording, green and pink. And that gives you a nice element of visual behind me. Without those lights, it will look a little bit more dull. So I'll show you a few examples of how the lights can affect what your camera looks like. So you'll see live examples of that. Um, so if you have a location where you're sitting down, then you want to get a nice visual behind you possibly. But I can see just here that light is bouncing in an odd way on top of that. So let me adjust that. So see, just simply by moving it, it's giving you a nice watch. You'll see how that changed. So just that glare was reduced. So now your focus is going to be drawn more to me than my background. So all these little elements in your visual location will help. If you're sitting down, it's easier. If you're moving around in a live stream, you might look at wireless live streaming. There's options for wireless live streaming with their HDMI wireless cards and etc. But that's a separate segment. We can make that if that's something you're interested in. Um, so yes, let's look at lighting. The first one we're going to look at is the easiest and cheapest option. If you want a bit of pop behind you, then you want to get yourself some LED strip lights, which are controlled by a remote control, basically. And you're looking at $25 to $30 for that. So that's option number one to add a bit of background pop to you. However, when you go for a main key light, something that I use, I'll share with you so you can see the pricing and the lights and how it works for you. So this one is going to be a two pack. We'll show you the three pack because that's the one I have. Okay, so if I bring it over to my screen. So that is a three pack lighting system that allows you to use the light with soft boxes and LED lighting. So you can see there, that gives you an idea of it. So I basically have one of those positioned at a 45 degree angle here full power with a soft box on and it bounces down on me and my desk so one light is actually lighting the the table as well as me because it bounces back up then in addition to that you want some additional mood lighting so you want to fill light because you'll see here if i turn this light off you'll see that gets a little bit darker if i put that back on you've got a little bit of pop there which allows me to stand out from my background so that's very important in live streaming if you're talking you want to pop um, in addition to that, I've got another light back here, just over there, which you probably can't see behind my typewriter, and that gives an extra pop as well. So the actual green LED lights are the strip lights. I have a small light back here with a pink gel on, which makes that. And then I have a slight different ambient color here to give you that mix of colors to make it appear more uh, in-depth and more HD and more pleasing. 
So if you have the autofocus live streaming camera like I do, it will make sure that you're focused and sharp, which is essential. In addition to that, if you're not looking to spend a higher budget, you can look at cheaper lights. Let me show you a few of those. The difference here will be the more light you have, the lower settings you use your camera, which makes your camera ISO performance better. The picture just appears better. You get less grain and less dots. You know, when it looks grainy or it looks, doesn't look right, the picture is not smooth. It's because you don't have enough light, basically. And uh, let me show you the other one. And these are a few cheaper options in terms of lighting, just to give you an idea of pricing. They won't be as powerful as the other ones I showed you, but you're looking at under $50 for a set of two. And in this scenario, you might have to position them a bit closer and you want a key light and a fill light. So the main light will be shining on you and the fill will cover in any shadows that come up. So that helps you with the lighting situation. In addition to that, there's a nice few little add-ons where you can actually use. Let me show you a few which are really good for creating mood so let me show you this one so this light here you can see it changes between colors it's battery powered it's nice and small so like i do there position them behind you to give you the extra pop so that's covering lighting for you and giving you a few examples um, hopefully this is coming together nicely now so we've covered a new few subjects helping you get the live stream set up next up i think we need to start looking at audio audio how it sounds because a lot of the times if you don't have great video audio being really nice and crisp and sharp at the right volume will be helpful so let's start looking at audio next so a big element of your live stream is going to be getting the right speaking the right audio the right vocals if your video is nice and clear excellent but if your audio sounds very echoey or not very nice then it's going to be a bad experience you want to match up or exceed your video quality with your audio which is why i have a dedicated system for my audio i'm going to show you a few options so you can see exactly what is good i've got a couple of microphones that i'll show you as starter options in addition to that i'll show you a few more advanced options that i use and how audio makes a massive difference so for example i used to use a microphone which is plugged straight into my camera a lapel mic so you actually put it here that was okay wasn't a bad option but until i heard the good audio that i use now i wasn't aware of how bad my audio sounded so i made a fair amount of videos 300 plus videos earlier in my setups and those were all using a certain setup but now going forward i can see the improvement or i should say hear the improvement so let's look at a couple of microphones microphones come in different variances how I use my mic is I plug it into a mixing board and that goes into my computer and then I marry up the video and the audio to get a nice overall experience. You may not want to get that. You might want to just plug in a mic to your computer, which is where things like this would come into play. So you could even put a shotgun mic on top of your camera and point that towards yourself and that will do your audio or alternatively, you can go off camera like I do and use a, a dedicated mic. So let me show you a couple of mic options here so you understand the pricing structure around mics. So you can build out your budget around what you're planning to do. So here I've got a, a decent option which I like very much. It's a Samsung Technologies Q2U microphone. It's XLR and also it's USB powered. So you'll see here you can actually use it via USB into your computer. And then if you come to a point that you want to upgrade, you can use an XLR. All, um, all that means is if you're totally new to this, USB power goes into your computer. XLR, you would need some sort of device to use that, which is where audio interfaces come in or mixing boards. So you can basically plug in your XLR mic to your audio board, mixer board, and that makes it go to a USB. You get more... Uh, you have more options on a mixer board. You can make your voice sound slightly different. It's more mid, low and highs. So if you have a more of a squeaky voice or a really deep voice, you can use a mixer to find the best mix to make you sound good. So that's an option. Uh, audio also, you'll notice here, I have an arm. So you'll need to also buy, if you're sitting down, uh, a microphone arm to keep your microphone steady. Because if it's steady, then it will sound a lot nicer than any uh, handling noise. I also have a mic flag, which has a logo on it, which is an option if you're going down the professional route to make it look more nice and like a show. That's something to think about. And um, these are all options to help you with audio and microphones. So I think there 
is a nice setup. So we've got option one, a dedicated microphone via USB. You could go down the route of a Boya microphone where it's attached on top of your camera. However, I have another option which will be a wireless miking system. So if you want to use a wireless mic, how would that look? Let me show you an example of that. The wireless mic option will be more interesting because you may be moving about and doing active things. So that would actually bring you into a whole new arena. So you've got here a wireless miking system. How it works is you have a separate unit here and also a receiver. So this would plug into your camera. Let me show you this. That unit will plug into your camera and this would go onto your lapel. You can also put a microphone into this. So you can basically clip it on like that and that will become your microphone. And that looks quite nice and smart and it avoids all this extra fuss. So you don't actually have to have any of the mixing board, the microphone, any of that. It's basically a system which plugs into your camera. And I won't lie, they do sound very good. It's not as good as this. <laughs> this is like more radio podcast quality. This will be a bit more wider encompassing so you'll hear more of the situation around you but the lapel mic and this are very good options and they're worth the investment you're looking at let me show you a price for these so you've got an idea of what kind of pricing this would be costing you so then you can tailor that to your needs a lot of this is going to be hit and miss because i am live streaming to a wide variety of audiences a lot of my things are sitting down shots but you might have a different situation so we need to give you enough options here to let you decide which one will be right for your situation so let's have a look at that wireless mic next so i brought up an example to show you the pricing on this so this is a hollyland lark system it's actually quite useful because you can have two people on there at the same time it's got a great battery life so it actually lasts a good couple of hours three hours per each one of these and then you can plug them back in here and they actually charge from the dock system you can see the price there 280 dollars so considering getting a microphone a mixer and everything else maybe that's a good option for you especially if you want wireless so that was a good look at microphones for you to give you enough options so we covered a number of things there today hopefully you found that useful if you're thinking about setting up your live stream and if there's any more questions or information that you're not sure about i am available to chat to so let me know at any point and we can work through that together